Hey guys, this is Mr. V and this is um, episode number eight of unit three for the APES review videos. This video is going to be on human population dynamics. So there are several factors that are going to affect a human population. So we mentioned some of these um, throughout the previous videos and we've talked about it when it comes to um, you know, biological populations that are not human. But um, in human populations, there's kind of special factors here. So obviously it's birth and death rates, just like any other uh, population. But some differences here are we're going to be are we're talking about education, okay, infant mortality, okay, age of marriage and nutrition, okay. So what that means is that there's going to be different factors that might play a role as to whether or not a population is going to be growing or declining. And then we're going to talk also a little bit about how you can calculate these things. Um, so we mentioned education quite a bit and fertility rates in the previous video. But um, one thing to think about too is infant mortality, right? So we talked about healthcare that might play a role in whether or not your population is going to grow because if you're um, not going to have a lot of ability for your populations to live through those first few years of life, then that population is not going to grow that much. Um, and then other factors are going to be the age of marriage. Um, that's going to tell how many babies are going to be had and how fast the population will grow. And of course, nutrition, because if you don't have, we mentioned in previous videos, about how some species may not survive depending on the amount of food or resource available. Well, for humans, if there's not enough uh, valid calories and micronutrients available, then there's gonna be issues with having babies that are gonna play a big role. So that's some differences between human populations and you know, what I call biological populations. Um, but those just means, those just, that just means eco ecological groups. So, there are limits. So we've talked about carrying capacity um, and how we have to, how other species have to deal with it, but humans do too. Um, and this was brought up by Thomas Malthus. His idea was that all populations have a carrying capacity and there's going to be limits and there's going to be issues. So when we talked about overshoot and dieback previously, those are going to be limited by either density independent or dependent factors. So what do we mean by that? Right. A density independent factor would be like a wildfire. Okay, so some species can be limited by fire, um, by their habitat. Humans can be limited by our range too. So um, if there's too much fire or drought or heat wave or hurricanes, right, that's going to limit where we live and it's not really going to play a factor of how many of us there are. That's what density independent means, that there's not a number of individuals affecting these, these just happen. So these are kind of, think of these as forces of nature, right? Whereas density dependent factors are gonna be more along the lines of disease transmission, territory size, availability of food, and access to clean air and water. So those things are gonna be more pressured if there's more individuals, right? So if you've got a lot of people living in one area, these are gonna be a big um, issue, so. And then of course you have the doubling time of population. So it's gonna be a problem you're gonna see likely in some multiple choice questions on the uh, apes for, or multiple choice uh, part of the exam. But um, there's gonna be questions about doubling time. So they're gonna ask you how long is it gonna take for a population to double? And there's a calculation that we call the rule of 70. And it's basically 70 divided by the growth rate of a population. Now, one thing to remember, the calculation here, the R, needs to be in the number percentage. So if they give you a calculation of 2.3, you need to write 70 divided by 2.3, not turning it into a decimal and calling it 0 0.023, okay? So that would be how you would change that, but that's not what we do here. We just use the number that's given. So you make sure you use that 2.3. So let's do an example here. Okay, so in here our here's our example. So if a country has a population of 100 million, um, and a growth rate of 2.25%, what's gonna be the doubling time of this population? So recall the equation. This is something you do have to have memorized, by the way. So it's 70 divided by growth rate is equal to the doubling time. So take a moment, you can pause the video and take your calculator out. You will be allowed to use a calculator in a problem like this on the AP exam, um, but try to see if you can calculate the doubling time and see if you can come up with the right answer. Okay, so hopefully you were able to do that, and let's go ahead and look at how that would work. That would be 70 divided by 2.25. Remember, number one is you do not need to change that number here um, to a decimal. So it's good the way it is, 2.25, so it's 70 divided by 2.25. When you type that into your calculator, that should give you 31.111 years, 
And this will likely be like on a multiple choice question, something close to this. It might ask you what year it would be that would happen. And then recall or notice up here, the distractor. They give you the number of the population. You don't need that number to figure this out. The population could be 100 million, could be you know 2 million, could be 10,000, could be 8. It doesn't matter. As long as the growth rate percentage is given, you can just figure that part out using that equation. Sorry, I didn't mean to strike through it there. Um, but so there you go. Okay, so um, if there here's some other resources, if you would like to do a little more background on that, and uh, I hope this was helpful.